Majid Reza was a talented athlete. Now he's the latest victim of Iran's brutal crackdown on popular protests and the second to be executed, hung before dawn in a public square. His family said to have received a phone call early this morning, go to the cemetery, your son has been executed. Majid Reza was arrested less than a month before he was sentenced to death. He was accused of killing two members of the religious paramilitary besiege militia. But the trials of protesters like him are widely regarded as shams. After being detained, Majid Reza was seen with his arm and hand bandaged. Iran's authorities are accused of torturing detainees and coercing confessions. At least 20 other young Iranians arrested since the largely peaceful protest began now face the death penalty, including this rapper from the western city of Kaman Shah. In this video shared online, his mother pleads for his life. Please help me, she says. They're going to hang my son. We're calling this the Gen Z generation who are leading these protests and they are overwhelmingly rejecting the regime and it seems that they are systematically trying to kill off anyone in this generation who is posing a threat to them and so these recent executions are supposed to be deterrents to the rest of this demographic from mobilizing against them it is in fact mobilizing more rage and anger. Protests have rocked Iran's clerical leadership for three months now. Hundreds have been killed by security forces. Sparked by the death of a young woman arrested for not wearing her headscarf correctly, the now the most sustained challenge the regime has ever faced. And despite the risks, Iranians are still taking to the streets. We spoke anonymously to one protester in the city of Zaidan, where conservative women in black gowns have joined the demonstrations. This was last Friday. Our people haven't been deterred by this intimidation. We will continue protesting until our demands are met. These executions will make us more determined to seek our legitimate demand, which is freedom. <laughs> At Majid Reza's grave today, tears, flowers and rage. They killed our son. Why should we be scared anymore, cries one woman. Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader, is a murderer, they chant. And today, the Foreign Secretary, James Cleverley, has been setting out his view of Britain's international role in a speech this morning. Secunda is here with me. What did he have to say about Iran? Well, he was asked about Iran and said that preventing the country from developing nuclear weapons is a priority. But his real message was intended for countries with fast-growing economies like Brazil, India, Indonesia and South Africa. And he said that he wanted Britain to deepen its relationship with them. We can't just hang on to the comfort blanket, perhaps, of our pre-existing friendships and alliances. We need to work. We need to graft. We need to make sure that we're having conversations with those countries that are all also being wooed by other philosophies. And we need to sell the benefit. Well, what did he mean by countries being wooed by other philosophies? A lot of this really revolves around the war in Ukraine. In the West, it's seen as a very black and white issue, but elsewhere in the world, many countries don't want to be seen as being particularly on one side or the other. India and South Africa, for example, have abstained during UN resolutions condemning Russia. Brazil's incoming president has criticized both Ukraine and Russia. And so uh, what we're seeing now is an attempt by the foreign secretary to get these influential countries to rally around the what's often referred to as the international rules-based system, whilst also giving a nod to the West's own history of imperial aggression. But turning to the future, can Britain compete when it comes to trade and investment opportunities in the developing world with rivals like China? Also, very pointedly, no real reference in this speech to the raising of concerns about human rights with any of these countries that Britain is planning on drawing closer to. Sukhanda Kamani, thank you.